Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Labs recap for Lobster Labs number two. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadowfear, whichever you prefer. And we are on to the representative match for round three. Randy versus Back to Udanta. Back to Udanta going for hovers, which against rovers. Not a un not a terribly unusual choice, but a little bit unusual. Just rovers going for a quick bolus push. A little bit risky there. Boluses are expensive. I mean, 185... Well, 185 metal is about the same as cost of Kodachi, so it's not the most expensive. But, indeed, going for a couple bolts is quickly. More importantly, the fact that they're going for a, such an aggressive strategy. Which, again, you know, Randy is definitely the stronger player, or at least back to Dante believes so. Okay, the ratings also kind of say that. So it makes sense to try to be aggressive, hit them early, before they manage to win on macro. Especially on a map like Titan Duel. So, back to Dante right now looks to be focused entirely on getting these boluses up. Got a couple boluses, push in, attack Randy's base directly. That should... I mean, that might do something. It's not likely to, unfortunately. 0k is not a game where it's necessarily easy to win on a rush. You can, but it depends on the map. And it depends on who you're fighting. And Randy already has Lotus set up. Their commander's a little forward, but they're not being hyper-aggressive. They already know the, the boluses are coming, so they're not going to be hyper-expanding. Like, it's possible at lower levels to win with a rush, but it's also really easy to defend against a rush. And especially with slower units like Bolus, it's not likely to be a big problem. So this appears to be something back to Dante might have realized as well. Deciding just to shift them off to a defensive posture. And instead go for... Well, more Bolas. Bolas Claymore. Okay, so I guess they're expecting to be running up against a larger army. And that is not what Randy's doing. Randy knows the Bolas are here. Just building fencers. Like, forget it. Get the fencers up. Don't worry about it. But with the dagger coming out as a little scout force for back to Dante, this is an interesting little trick. I, mean, I don't think Randy saw that, which means that Randy's not going to be reacting to it, which means these fencers, I mean, they're still going to be fine. One dagger won't be enough, but if there were more daggers, that would be different. There, there aren't more daggers, though. There's just the one. And the Claymore, which admittedly could be quite the threat. And that is it for Randy scouting. Back to Dante. Continue to just to... Maintain a defensive posture. They don't really want to throw any units away if they can help it. They are clearly focused on trying to get up as much of an expansion as possible. They are, in fact, going to be contesting the late game. Pushing in... Okay, I like that. Building the solar collectors as well. Actually, I kind of like the fact that building wind gens around everything, too. It's not the best wind map, but... Still, building power like that is always a good idea. Now, building power like this in the solar collectors is a much better idea... But they're doing that too, so it's fine. Like, Batu Dante aware of the power needs. Randy well aware. I mean, Randy was perfectly fine. It's just after two games where one player was completely wiped out because they didn't have energy. And that just, that torpedoed the rest of their game. Or both players did, and it just kind of evened out because both players had to make that mistake. It's nice to see both players, in this case, being mindful of their energy. So they know they're building enough and they have the ability to spend it all. So right now, expansions continuing apace. Randy a little bit ahead on those. But Bakhti Dante not too far, much farther behind. Of course, the question is, what is Bakhti Dante going to do when Randy attacks over to the south here and all of Randy's, all of Bakhti's forces are in the north? I mean, this is not a bad army for dealing with defensers. It's just... They aren't there. I mean, they're just out of position. These fencers are going to be able to get some free shots in. And unfortunately, this Bolas is out of position from the rest of its squad, so it's going to be taken out quickly, unless it regroups, which is exactly what it's doing. Regrouping, then moving in. Always a wise strategy. Unfortunately, they are still kind of coming in one at a time. Batu Danta doesn't want to get too close. They know that the fencers are a threat, and they know that the Bolas can't easily deal with them, and now that they know the fences are here... Setting up halberds! That is the counter defensers. There you go. Nice. Nice thinking there, Batu Danta. Randy, on the other hand, knows that. Have to 
do a little bit more than just fencers. Throwing a bunch of scorches as well. That should be fine. I mean, it's the halberds that are going to be a problem for the fencers. The boluses against the scorchers, I think it's a relatively even... F Actually, no, the boluses win. Not an even fight. Boluses let down the scorchers. It kind of comes down to numbers, though. With enough numbers, the scorchers will overwhelm. The boluses are about 50% more expensive. So it's easy enough to get overwhelming numbers with scorchers against bolus. And the boluses, like I said, they their slow is the main advantage they have against the scorchers that makes them win. Now, of course, the Claymore is still here. And while we haven't seen Claymore on land since the patch, it should be a proper riot unit that should throw a or Death Charge-ish thing rolling across the ground and blowing up the Scorchers. That's what's supposed to happen. Now, in the past, Claymore has generally been a joke unit that whenever it attacks, it ends up blowing itself up. But that's why it was patched, so that it's no longer a joke unit. And I'm really excited to see it, actually. I want to see how it works out when it's working the way it's kind of meant to. But also on land. But for now, though, we have to wait for the Halibers to be built up, because that, again, is the main anti-fencer force coming out here from Back to Danta. And Scorcher trying to be careful here. Bolus is threatening, posturing, but Back to Danta... I gotta be careful. It's kind of one of the situations where one part of the fight is gonna determine it. Halibers trying to come in here. Threaten out the fencers, giving Bolus' time to push in, but Randy... Already moving in with the Lotuses. Taking out, or at least threatening a couple Boluses in the process. Halberds able, Halberd's able to move in. Threaten the Fencers. Scorch is coming in here, but this is the overlooking numbers I was talking about. The Claymores are out of position to actually deal with this. Oh, that is unfortunate. If the Claymores had come along with the Boluses, it would have been a very different story. However, back to down to still managing to apply pressure. So it would have been a different story, but it wouldn't have been much different. Wouldn't have been much better. Claymores, however, not quite in a range. What is... Oh, the range isn't that big. So, yeah. As is typical for riot units. No surprises there. Randy being very careful about this. And indeed, they work! The Claymores work! How about that? I mean, assuming they live, that is the one thing. They have to actually survive long enough to shoot. And now... Yeah, overwhelming numbers are exactly what I was talking about. As Randy already had an overwhelming economic advantage to work with. Pulling that an overwhelming army advantage. Back to Tannis commander looks to be going down pretty shortly. I mean... Running hovers is not easy, and I think that could have worked. I mean, the Claymores... They aren't the typical approach. The mace is usually what you'd use as the counter there, but the Claymore is cheaper. It's just kind of like a ripper, and it's a one-shot high alpha unit that... If it doesn't kill immediately, it dies. That's the, that's the trade-off. Mace, on the other hand, is a bunch of consistent damage. And a decent range, too. It's just expensive. Now back to down to so thoroughly on the back foot that I'm really not sure what they have planned right now. Going back to the high, the mass bolus, but just can't really get enough to provide much of a threat. And bolus halberd, but it's just the fact that Randy scouted them and could pull up the fencers immediately. And back to down to, I don't think quite realized that they were scouted and needed to adjust what they were doing. I mean, the Halberds again came in, but that was reactive. They didn't have the Halberds to deal with the Fencers when they first encountered them. And unfortunately, that was a kind of a consequence of not having Scout at all. Like, back to down to never pulled that dagger into Randy's base to see what was going on. Had they done so, they might have seen the Fencers and known to respond sooner. Because, I mean, I don't encourage guessing. I encourage Scouting. But back to down to didn't Scout. And Thunderbird sealing the deal as well. I mean, at this point, it is basically Randy's game to lose. Fortunately, as it goes, the Thunderbird is that just that unit that... I mean, it is quite the game-ender unit. For as accessible as it is, if you have the advantage and you just need to break through your opponent's defenses one last time, Thunderbird is the way to go. And that's exactly what Randy has done. And Bakhtiv down to not willing to throw in the towel just yet. I don't think they quite realize how far behind they are. But this is looking like Randy's just going to be having a victory lap here. I mean, the factory is very nearly down. Halberd coming out here to try to defend. Lotus is up as well. But again, the Thunderbird should be back for round two. And yeah, it is rearmed and ready. 
All it needs to do is just come back here, wipe out the last couple of halberds, and that should be that. Assuming they even survived the Scorchers, honestly. The Scorchers are already doing enough damage. I mean, really, it's... Yeah, that that Silver Star there, that that's value. Back to down to realizing the writing is on the wall, and that is it. Randy takes it. Solid win for Randy, who actually ended up going 3-0 in the tournament as a whole. Completely undefeated. But it's kind of sad. Baxi Dante did have a bit of a chance there. I mean, the Halberds had come in position to deal with the fencers in the middle of the game. They would have had a chance to actually get rid of them, but unfortunately, that's simply not how things went. I mean, again, also the lack of scouting that they couldn't didn't have the Halberds in time to deal with the fencers as it was. So yeah, despite having a larger arm or more valuable army and a lot of counters, they just didn't have them in the right position at the right time. So yeah, that is that. Although, I, I must say, I am impressed by the fact that neither player accessed any medal. I mean, the very, very, very end, losing the commander and all, but yeah, neither player accessed medal. So, I am just proud of that. It's a small victory, but it is a victory nonetheless. So anyway, that was that. That was the recap for the Lobster Roll Tournament for last Friday. So again, there is... The plan is for the Lord to be Lobster Roll Tournaments on Saturdays. I unfortunately have other plans because I'm trying to do the Immortal stuff as well. I've already committed to that, so... I got Immortal Gates of Pyre stuff. So that is what I'm doing Saturday. So Sundays will be the recap for the Lobster Roll Tournament. Or just replays, whichever. So yeah, not quite live, but still commentary. Anyhow, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And... Until next time, have a good night, everyone.